Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, in this lecture 7, we will be discussing uh, different methods of real estate investing, uh, self uh, owning of real estate, direct ownership of real estate. Uh, we will be looking at real estate investment trust REITs and some other methods of investment in real estate. So, let us start. So, first of all, uh, what will be discussed in this particular session. So, first we will have a brief overview of the different methods of real estate investing, um, real estate investment uh, methods um, like we will introduce them. Then what is uh, direct ownership, uh, one of the commonly known real estate investing method. Then what are the advantages of direct ownership? Then what are the risks associated with direct ownership that will be there. Then strategies for successful real estate investments, how we can attain success in real estate investments. Then introducing the real estate investment trust. So there is one indirect method of uh, investment in real estate. So that will also be discussed. Then what is this structure, what, what is this new method, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, new for India, for other countries, uh, some uh, western countries REIT is a, uh, a very old concept, but recently in India we also have this method of investing in real estate. So, we will be discussing that. So, what is REIT? Then structure of REIT. So, what is uh, the, the structure, uh, how this is operates, this REIT operates that will be discussed. Then types of REITs. So, there are different type of REITs which are available that will be there. Then advantages of investing in REIT. So, what are the advantages as an investor you get for investing in REIT? So, that will be discussed. Um, we have like said advantages related to uh, direct ownership of uh, real estate uh, will be discussed. Similarly, we will also be uh, discussing the, uh, the uh, advantages of investing in REIT. Then uh, there is a specific regulatory framework for REIT in India. So, that who is governing that, who, how that is taking place, so that will be uh, also there. And then to how to invest in REIT, uh, how we can invest in this particular uh, instrument, REIT. And then what are the risks associated with REIT? Uh, comparison of REIT with direct ownership, we will have a uh, good discussion on what are the differences uh, in uh, different aspects relating to investing in uh, uh, dire directly in, in into re real estate and uh, through REIT. So, that will be there and of course, we will uh, also uh, touch upon some other investment options which are there for uh, investing in real estate. But majorly, we will be focusing on direct ownership and REIT in this particular lecture. So, first a brief revision of what we uh, did in last class. So, in last class, we have uh, uh, touched upon real estate financing, different uh, aspects of real estate uh, uh, financing, how they, uh, how the loan structures are, and uh, uh, how uh, the the real estate finance is basically very important and crucial aspect of uh, uh, understanding real estate market. Uh, so all that was there in the financing part, and then we talked about different valuation methods uh, relating to real estate. There are different approaches. Uh, so uh, the three different approaches was discussed in that particular session. Uh, and uh, which approach is suitable for which particular type of real estate that was there. Then we also talked about leasing in that particular session that, uh, that uh, leasing there are different type of leasing and how the risk transfers from owner to tenant and uh, depending on uh, your requirements as a tenant or owner, you can uh, opt for different form of lease which were discussed in that particular session. So, in the last class, uh, we dwell upon these particular um, uh, topics. Now, moving on to 
investing, how, what are the different investing options available for us in real estate. So uh, moving on to methods of real estate investing. So we have plethora of avenues for investors to explore, each with its own unique characteristics and opportunities. So let's begin by understanding the scope of this discussion. So we'll be exploring various approaches individu individual can take to invest in real estate from the more traditional method like direct ownership to model financial uh, instruments such as um, real estate investment trusts, REITs. There is a wide range of options available for investors to consider. Additionally, we'll also delve into alternative investment options such as crowdfunding, partnership uh, and uh, other such methods. These alternative methods offer innovative ways for investors to pass, participate in real estate ventures, providing opportunities for diversification and potentially high returns. So that is how we will be progressing. So introduction to the diverse method, discussion on traditional modern approaches, uh, which include direct ownership and REIT, which is the focus of this particular lecture. And then we will be exploring alternative options such as crowdfunding, partnership fund and uh, other such method, we will be coming to that also. Then, uh, so what is uh, these methods? Uh, let's like have a introduction of that. So direct uh, ownership. So this method involves acquiring physical real estate properties such as uh, residential apartments, commercial office spaces, retail shops or lands for development. Direct ownership gives investors direct control over their investments, allowing them to make decisions regarding property management, leasing and maintenance. Moving on, we have real estate investment trust. REIT offers an alternative avenue for investing in real estate by investing in publicly traded companies that own and manage income generating real estate properties across India. Investor can access a diversified portfolio of properties without the need for direct ownership. REIT provides benefit such as diversification, liquidity and potential for passive income through dividends. Lastly, we'll discuss other investment options. This category encompasses various alternative methods such as real estate crowdfunding, the partnership and other such methods. These methods provide investors with additional opportunities to participate in specific projects or assess assets in the real estate market. Real estate crowdfunding, for example, allows investors to pool fund online for specific real estate project, while partnership funds and other such methods involve collaboration with other investors to collectively invest in real estate ventures. So we'll look at that also in this particular session. So what is direct ownership? So uh, direct ownership in real estate essentially means that an individual or entity purchase a property outright, holding full ownership and control over it. Unlike indirect form of real estate investments, such as investing in REIT or real estate funds, where investors pool their capital and invest in portfolio managed by professionals, direct ownership offers a more hand-on approach to property investment. Direct ownership grants investors the autonomy to make decisions regarding their properties, including management, leasing and dispossession strategies without being subject to decisions of fund managers or trustees. While direct ownership offers greater control and potential for customization of investment strategies, it also entails responsibilities such as property maintenance, tenant management and dealing with regulatory compliance directly. Investors opting for direct ownership should conduct thorough due diligence on properties, considering factors such as location, market conditions, potential rental income, and long-term appreciation prospects to make informed investment decisions. Despite the challenges and responsibilities associated with direct ownership, it remains a popular choice for investors seeking greater control over their real estate investments and the potential for higher returns over the long term. In summary, direct ownership provides individual investors and entities with the opportunity to directly acquire and manage real estate assets, 
offering autonomy, control and potential for customization in investment strategies compared to indirect form of real estate investment. But we should remember when we are talking about direct ownership, we are saying that the full responsibility of that property, that real estate is with, is with you. You are solely responsible for management, for upkeep of that property. All the risk lies with the owner of the property. They are responsible for it. So all the profit is yours. So all the risk is also yours. So that is the basic underlying feature of this form of investing that it is, uh, it can be very, very uh, profitable, but it can also be risky, very, very risky because you are the only sole person responsible for that property. Now, moving on to advantages of direct ownership. So control and flexibility, direct ownership empowers investors with full control over their investment decisions. They have the autonomy in implement strategies, uh, to implement strategies tailored to their specific preferences and financial goals. This include decision regarding property management, leasing terms, renovations and exit strategies. Unlike indirect real estate investments, where decisions are often made by fund managers or trustees, direct ownership allows investors to directly oversee their properties, giving them a hand-on approach to managing their investments. Potential for higher returns. Direct ownership of real estate presents the potential for higher returns compared to indirect investing investment options. This is attributed to several factors. Leverage. Investors can leverage their investment by using financing options such as mortgages to amplify their purchasing power and potentially enhance returns. Then there is a possibility of rental agreement. So direct owners have the flexibility to negotiate rental agreements directly with tenants, optimizing rental income and maximizing cash flow. Then potential for property appreciation. Owner can benefit from property appreciation over time, which can significantly increase the value of their investment, leading to higher returns upon sale. By actively managing their properties and making strategic decisions, investors can unlock the full potential for generating attractive returns from their real estate investments. Then certain other aspects like portfolio diversification. Real estate serves as an effective diversification tool with an investment portfolio. It offers unique characteristics that often exhibit low correlation with traditional asset classes like stocks and bonds. So including direct real estate ownership and investment portfolio helps spread risk and reduce overall portfolio volatility, especially during market downturns or economic uncertainties. Diversification through real estate provides investors with a broad range of investment opportunities, helping to achieve a well-balanced and resilient portfolio. Tax advantages. Direct ownership of real estate offers various tax benefits that can enhance overall investment returns. Depreciation. Deductions. Investors can deduct a portion of the property's value each year as depreciation expense, reducing taxable income and increase cash flow. Mortgage interest deductions. Interest paid on mortgage loans for investment properties is tax deductible, providing additional tax savings for property owners. Capital gain tax advantages. Upon sale of the property, investors may be benefit from favorable capital gain, uh, gain tax treatment, depending on the holding period and other factors. Leveraging these tax advantages effectively can significantly improve the after-tax return on real estate investments, further enhancing the overall attractiveness of direct ownership. In summary, direct ownership of real estate offers investors a range of advantages, including control and flexibility, potential for higher returns, portfolio diversification benefits, and valuable tax advantages. These benefits make direct ownership an appealing option for investors looking to build wealth 
generate income and achieve long term financial success through real estate investments. Then we move on to risk associated with direct real estate ownership. Now whenever we talk about any investment we always talk about the risk. So what are the risk? So market volatility. So real estate market are susceptible to fluctuations in property values, rental rates and occupancy level due to various economic, demographic and geopolitical factors. Changes in supply and demand dynamics, interest rate, economic conditions, we have uh, discussed this earlier. Local market trends can impact the performance of real estate investments. Investors should be prepared to navigate market volatility by conducting thorough uh, market research, diversifying their portfolios and implementing risk management strategies. And please keep this in mind that we are talking about all this risk being there in the property and who will be managing them, who will be responsible for them, the direct, if you are talking about direct ownership, the direct owner of that property will be have all risk to manage. So whether it is supply and demand uh, in the market, all these factors which are associated with uh, the economy of the, uh, the country or the state uh, uh, where the, the real estate is, uh, it is impacting uh, that property and who is taking care of that, who will be um, um, planning for that and that will be the direct owner of the property. So then we come to illiquidity. Then another important facet is illiquidity which can become a risk. Now direct real estate investment can be relatively illiquid compared to other asset classes such as stocks or bonds. Stocks and bonds there are specific well set markets where the buyer and sellers are constantly available. The market liquidity is there, the unit, uh, the unit size of the, the, uh, uh, of the stocks and bonds is small. Um, uh, they can be easily sold and bought uh, in those markets, but it's not like that in real estate. So selling properties quickly and converting investments into cash may be challenging, especially during unfavorable market conditions or in regions with limited demand. Illiquidity risk requires investors to have a long term investment horizon and sufficient liquidity reversed to reserves to meet unexpected financial needs without relying on immediate property sale. Then we have management burden. So property management entails significant time um, and uh, time effort and expertise to effectively address various operational challenges. Responsibilities include maintenance and repair, tenant management, lease negotiations, rent collection and regulatory compliance all have to be done by you. Investors may choose to self-manage their properties or hire professional property management uh, or option. They can go for property management professionals to hire uh, for uh, managing their properties. That can be option, but the cost associated with that has to be kept in mind. Then uh, both, option, both options involve associated cost and management oversight. Then capital intensity. So real estate investments offer require substantial capital for property acquisition, renovations and ongoing operational expenses. Capital intensive nature of real estate investing can limit accessibility for small investors and increase financial risk exposure. This is a very key point. The means for uh, investing in such capital expend heavy uh, investments. Uh, small investors for them when we talk about uh, we talked about a portfolio diversification using real estate but when we are saying that direct ownership using that for portfolio diversification can small investor do that it's not possible for them because then the percentage of in their investment significant percentage of their portfolio will be there in the uh, real estate uh, so well balanced between equity, bonds and uh, real estate can not be managed for small investors because uh, in single real estate investment, lot of their um, uh, capital will go. 
So, that is applicable to investor with the larger capital pool. So, that we have to keep in mind. Then investors should carefully evaluate capital requirements, assess financing options and develop realistic budget strategies to mitigate the impact of capital intensity on investment performance. Understanding and effectively managing these risks is crucial for investors engaging in direct real estate ownership by adopting proactive risk mitigation strategies, conducting comprehensive due diligence and maintaining a disciplined investment approach, investors can navigate the complexities of real estate investing and enhancing the long term success, success of their investing investment portfolios. So, then we move on to the strategies for successful real estate investments. So, first strategy that is your buy and hold. So, buy and hold is a long term investment strategy where investors acquire properties with the intention of holding them for appreciation and rental income. This strategy emphasizes capital appreciation over time and generates passive income through rental payments. Investors benefit from property appreciation, tax advantages and consistent cash flow from rental income especially in stable or growing markets. Then we have another strategy that is fix and flip. So, fix and flip is a short term strategy involving the purchase, renovation and resale of properties to prof for profit. Investors identify undervalued or distressed properties, renovate them to increase their market value and sell them quickly for a higher price. The st this strategy requires strong market knowledge, renovation expertise and efficient project management to maximize return within a short time frame. Then we have another strategy that is for rental income. So, rental income strategy focuses on generating passive income by leasing properties to tenants and collecting rental payments. Investors benefit from steady cash flow, long term appreciation potential and tax advantages associated with rental properties. Effective property management, tenant screening and lease management are crucial for success in this strategy. Then we move on to value add opportunities. So, value add opportunities, value add strategy basically involves identifying properties with potential for value enhancement through renovation, repositioning or development. Investors seek opportunities to improve underperforming properties, increase occupancy rate or add additional amenities to enhance property value. This strategy requires a comprehensive understanding of market trends, property fundamentals and the ability to execute value enhancing initiatives effectively. Each of these strategies offer unique opportunities and challenges and the suitability depends on investors goal, risk tolerance and market condition. Successful real estate investors often diversify their portfolio by incorporating a combination of these strategies to optimize return and mitigate risk over the long term period. So, moving on to introduction to real estate investment trust that is also known as REITs. So, if you um, have to understand REIT, REIT uh, is very similar to mutual funds. So, in mutual funds we have a proper manager who is uh, deciding on a portfolio of shares, they are buying shares uh, from the money uh, of uh, the pool of money which is collected from uh, different individual investors who are buying um, units of mutual funds um, maybe through SIP, maybe through their direct purchase and then they are putting all this money to a, a fund manager. The fund manager on their behalf is buying the uh, uh, shares of uh, uh, different companies and then they are creating a portfolio of different uh, stocks, different equities of these companies and the appreciation of these stocks and the dividend earned by them is then distributed amongst the unit holders of these uh, uh, these mutual funds. So, similar concept you can say is applied to 
real estate also. Now, this concept when applied to real estate is known as your real estate investment trust. Here, there is uh, a manager, there is somebody who is managing this REIT and uh, there are unit holders just like we have in mutual funds that is normal investors who are buying the, uh, the single units of these um, uh, pool funds uh, like they are pooling uh, money into them by buying their units and then the collected money is then used for purchasing of different um, um, real estate uh, units, buildings and uh, then um, like uh, generally you will see that in India we have uh, uh, commercial uh, real estate uh, becoming part of the portfolio of REITs. So, they will be lending, uh, they will be uh, leasing them out to uh, different companies and the rental income generated through this process will then be distributed to the unit holders. So, the basic mechanism of REIT and mutual funds have a lot of similarities. Now, uh, so basically uh, this is how we can understand this. So, real estate investment trust are investment vehicles that allow individual to invest in income generating real estate assets without directly owning the properties themselves. So, this is one of the indirect methods of investing in real estate and you can understand that earlier we discussed that when we are talking about uh, diversification of portfolio uh, using real estate. So, that is not possible when we are talking about small investors, but when it comes to REIT, the single unit, small unit uh, which is there of a REIT is just like traded, tradable like um, uh, stocks in the market. So, they can be purchased by the unit holders, the investors and then they can use it for the uh, diversification of their portfolio by adding REITs to their portfolio of uh, stocks, bonds and you can add REITs to that. So, that facility is being provided by REITs. So, let us discuss this particular area now in detail. So, what is REIT? So, we have just talked about it. Let us go into the uh, definition part. So, a REIT is essentially a company that owns, operate or finance income generating real estate properties across various sectors such as residential, commercial, retail and hospitality. Unlike traditional real estate investments where investors directly own and manage properties, REIT provide investors with an opportunity to invest in real estate through publicly traded securities typically in the forms of share traded on stock exchanges. Now, let us take a closer look. So, of these key characteristics of the REIT, so they offer investors the benefit of real estate ownership such as rental income and pot potential capital appreciation without the complexities and responsibilities associated with property management. Additionally, REIT are required by law to distribute a significant portion of their income to shareholders in the form of dividends, making them attractive investment options for income seeking investors. So, that is there, but we will have to understand this that REIT is a, um, is, um, is a concept which has been there in um, uh, developed countries for a very long period of time, specifically US where it, this concept was started. It has been for a uh, very long time there has it started in 1960s and still it is there and it is it has uh, of course uh, gradually uh, changed its structure over the period of time, but uh, it is a uh, structure which is available to investors in uh, developed countries for a very long period of time. But now slowly and gradually different developing countries which includes India, these concepts are coming up for investment and they are providing real estate investors another opportunity, another area to invest in real estate. So, so let us move on to the structure of REIT. So, structure of REIT, we will be talking about the uh, different components, real estate assets, shareholders, management. So, let us look at that. So, real estate assets, so they are, these are the uh, properties owned or financed by the REIT. They can include various types of income generating real estate asset such as office buildings, shopping malls, apartment complexes, hotel and industrial facilities. So, in India you will see that we have three listed REITs. Listed means that they are in the market, they are, they are, they have their shares listed in the market. So, we have four uh, REITs 
out of them the three reads are office reads and the third read is of the shopping uh, mall uh, operating read so uh, uh, in india we have reads operating in commercial uh, buildings but in other parts of the world you will see that there are different type of reads which includes residential uh, reads also um, managing them also so th that is there and then we have uh, shareholders so there these are the investors who purchase share of the read so investors uh, uh, common people so by investing in, in reads shareholders gain exposure to income and potential ap appreciation of the underlying real estate asset held by the read then we come to management of the read so this component comprises of professional responsible for managing the reads assets and operations this include property acquisition disposition uh, leasing property management financial management and strategic decision making to maximize returns for shareholders so understanding the structure of a reit is crucial for investors to grasp how these investment vehicles operate and how they can potentially fit into their investment portfolios now that we have foundational understanding of reit and their structure so let's move ahead so now what are the types of reits which are there so we have equity reits we have mortgage reits and we have hybrid reits so equity reits are a typic uh, are your typical reits which are there in india we only have equity reits so equity reits are a type of real estate investment trusts that primarily own and operate income generating real estate properties these properties can span various sectors which we have discussed from ranging from residential commercial retail industry and hospitality in india i like i discussed we have um, specifically office reits and we have a one uh, new uh, um, shopping uh, uh, center relating reit so that is the uh, the focus in india and uh, so equity reits gen uh, reits generate revenue primarily from rental income collected from tenant leasing the properties they own additionally they may also benefit from capital appreciation if the value of the properties they own increases over time that is there equity reits offer investor the opportunity to invest in a diversified portfolio of real estate assets without the need of direct property ownership making them an attractive options uh, for those seeking exposure to the real estate market so basically there are two ways in which equity uh, reit investors can benefit one is through dividends which timely through the uh, income which is generated by these reits is passed on to the uh, investors the unit holders of the reit and the other way is the appreciation of reit shares which are listed in the market so the appreciation of those shares will also provide an opportunity of uh, maximizing the returns for the investors so two ways one is dividends and the other one is the uh, maximizing of the uh, the increasing the value of the shares which are listed of reit in the market just like normal equity then we have mortgage reits so mortgage reits operate differently from equity reits instead of owning physical properties mortgage reits provide financing for real estate transaction by investing in mortgages or mortgage backed securities these reits can earn income primarily from the interest payment on the mortgages they hold or the return generated from mortgage backed securities mortgage reits may also engage in other financial activities such as originating or purchasing mortgage loans securitizing mortgages or investing in other real estate debt instruments so that is there then we have hybrid which is a combination of both equity reit and mortgage reit so that we can understand that will be a combination of both the aspects then we have advantages what are the advantages of investing in reit so the first and the foremost is diversification so we have understood this earlier also that diversification is a key component of any investment so when we try to invest we want to uh, have uh, we want to uh, balance our risk because if we it's a old adage that it's old saying that we should remember that uh, we should uh, not keep all our eggs in the same place so similarly the investment should also be spread out so si when we are talking about investments diversification uh, real estate is helping us by uh, uh, in our portfolio when we are adding real estate we are adding uh, stocks we are adding bonds we are adding real estate we are diversifying our portfolio but direct ownership real estate meant uh, real uh, estate investment is heavy costly so the option is that we can go for reits 
A small investor can go for REIT, they can go for the smaller units. If we buy one uh, uh, smaller unit, two smaller units, the number of units which we want for REIT, we can decide and we can according to our budget, according to the, the amount of uh, money which is available uh, with us for investment. So when we, we are doing that, we are creating a diversification, diversified pool of investment. So that is a very good advantage which we are getting out of the REIT. The other advantage which REIT has is liquidity. So liquidity refers to the ease with which an investment can be brought or sold without significantly affecting its price. One of the key advantages of investing in REIT is the liquidity they offer compared to direct real estate investment. REIT shares are traded on stock exchanges just like stocks allowing investors to buy and sell them quickly and easily through brokerage accounts. This provides investors with the flexibility to adjust their investment position as needed without the time consuming process of buying or selling physical properties. The liquidity of REIT shares make them a more accessible and convenient investment option for investors seeking exposure to real estate market. So liquidity is a very important concept of REIT because uh, specifically when we talk about Indian market, the, uh, the uh, stock exchange Board of India, um, um, the, uh, the, the SEBI, have, what they have done is, they, um, um, Security Exchange Board of India, what they have done is that they have basically um, uh, um, reduced the unit size of REITs to one. So when you are going for, uh, um, when you are um, uh, talking about a, a specific unit, a small investment can be made. Uh, so uh, uh, if you have if you have a lower budget you can go for a fewer number of shares if you have higher budget you can go for more number of shares so that flexibility because uh, uh, of the the, the uh, for the retail participation to increase the sebi has done that and that is why uh, liquidity is a very good aspect of reit and then we have dividend income so uh, another attractive feature of investing in reit is the potential for dividend income REITs are required by law to distribute a significant portion of their income to shareholders in the form of dividend. This means that investors in REIT can expect to receive regular income streams from their investment, typically in the form of quarterly or annual dividends. The consistent and predictable income provided by the REIT uh, dividends can be particularly appealing to income seeking investors such as retirees or those looking to supplement their salary with passive income. Additionally, the requirement for REITs to distribute dividend can also act as a source of discipline for REIT managers, encouraging prudent financial management and shareholder friendly policies. So that is the advantages of investing in REIT. Then we go to regulatory framework for REITs in India. So uh, as I discussed earlier that we have uh, um, certain regulations which are formed in India. Uh, REIT were introduced in India in 2014 and uh, subsequently we have four REITs now. So uh, uh, they are based on certain framework developed uh, uh, by uh, uh, SEBI and uh, uh, on this uh, act which is uh, there, uh, the REITs have to follow a certain uh, uh, regulatory framework for listing, there are certain listing guidelines for, for uh, shareholder uh, um, uh, like the, the dividend distribution. So all that is part of the regulatory framework for REITs. Now what is this? So REITs were introduced in India in 2014 with the aim of providing investors with a platform to invest in income generating real estate assets. Uh, before the introduction of REIT, investing in REIT typically required significant capital and capital and expertise, making it inaccessible to many individual investors, specifically commercial real estate because REITs are uh, investing in commercial real estate and providing opportunity for common investors to invest in commercial real estate through REIT. So uh, this uh, regulation was uh, passed by SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India in uh, 2014 and uh, the, uh, the requirement for a dividend uh, distribution, the requirement for management of REITs, all this is being followed through the regulatory framework which has been led under this particular act. So moving on to how to invest in REITs. So we have stock exchanges, we have, uh, if I want to invest in uh, REIT, it is the investment is which very much similar to how we are investing in stocks. So if we, um, we, have a, a, we have a DMAT account. 
if we have a DMAT account, then uh, uh, then we can purchase uh, read shares just like normal equity shares in uh, uh, these equity markets. So we can go to the uh, stock market uh, that is uh, uh, through online uh, trading. Uh, we can uh, purchase units of these REITs through market, and we can keep them in our D DMAT at the regular period. Uh, a dis dividend will be distributed by REITs to the investors. Uh, also, apart from that, there will be capital appreciation by the increase of price of REITs whenever that happens. So, it is just like equity investing. So, REIT shares are listed and traded on stock exchanges, allowing investors to buy and sell share through brokerage account, just like we are doing for stock market. Uh, for this, we will require a DMAT account. So, investors need a DMAT account to hold REIT shares in electronic form. Uh, and the investment consideration, consider factors such as REIT portfolio. So, if you are trying to create a portfolio of stocks, bonds, REITs, or maybe different type of REITs, then management team. What is the management team of the REIT? That we also have to look into, whether they are, um, like what is the background of that team? That is another aspect which we can look at. Then we have financial performance of the REIT that we can look at that what are the different uh, um, financial ratios these things can help us in guiding whether we should invest in REIT. So, that is something we should understand and the dividend yield because that is very, very important. A big part uh, of the uh, investing in REIT is the dividend. So, because the timely distribution of dividend and the compulsion of the framework which has been laid down by the, uh, the authorities for the REIT to operate is that they give a significant portion of their uh, um, income in the form of dividend to the investors. So, uh, so um, at least 90 percent, so that uh, has to be distributed to the investors. So, that is a significant amount. So, what is the dividend history of the, uh, the uh, a particular REIT? That uh, can be a very good, uh, uh, you know, point of investment consideration. So, these are some factors which we need to keep in mind to invest in REITs. Then, what are the risks associated with REIT investment? So, we have market risk. So, market fluctuation just like equity, uh, the market fluctuations which are there, sometimes uh, we have um, boom periods, we have sometimes we have periods which are um, difficult to manage. Then in that case, uh, there can be price appreciation of REITs, there can be decrease in the REIT also. So, that is there that we have to keep in mind, that is the risk which is there. Then liquidity risk, limited liquidity compared to traditional stock and bonds. When we compare REITs with direct ownership, the liquidity is high. But when we are talking about, uh, when we are talking about um, um, uh, REIT comparing, comparison with uh, stocks and bonds, uh, uh, you will see that the liquidity is not that high. Because of course, uh, this is a newer instrument uh, also, you will see. But uh, in India, uh, uh, authorities SEBI have, like I said, reduced the unit size to one uh, for a, a REIT to, uh, you know, to purchase a particular unit. You can even buy one unit of REIT. So, it has been, uh, they have done improvements, they have made it more um, liquid. So, that, that particular uh, area is uh, uh, worked up, specifically talking about India, you can say that we have more liquidity in, in comparison to some other markets of REIT. Then regulatory risk. So, changes in regulation governing REITs can affect their operation and return and that is there because uh, the tax structure of the REIT is very important to understand. And when we are saying the tax structure of REIT, uh, 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 that is being uh, again uh, subjected to the government rules and regulation. And uh, because of that, uh, we always have to look at that and that can be a risk factor in the risk uh, in the REIT investment. Then uh, we go to uh, the differences. Now, let us uh, just summarize all the differences which we have discussed about uh, the direct ownership and REITs. So, uh, the ownership structure. So, in, uh, in direct ownership, investors directly own uh, individual properties. In REITs, investors own shares of a diversified portfolio of real estate assets held by the REIT. So, there is a difference in the ownership structure. Direct uh, ownership, you are the person who is uh, solely owning that property uh, via uh, in REIT, you are indirectly investing in a different uh, uh, portfolio of uh, uh, real estate properties. Then control. In um, direct ownership, you have 
full control of the property and in uh, REITs you do not have control over the property, you are just a shareholder or the unit holder of the REIT. So, investors have very limited role in the decision making, management will be decision uh, taking the decision, but of course, there are certain provisions uh, which are available just like for the minority shareholders in the uh, stocks, S same kind of uh, arrangements have been there uh, through which indirectly uh, they can have some amount of control, but not like direct ownership. Then investment size, so typically uh, direct ownership requires larger upfront investment for property acquisition, whereas REIT like specifically if we talk about Indian uh, uh, one unit. So, for example, if the share price is 300, so for that uh, share price of the REIT is 300, so you are paying 300 rupees for one unit, so that uh, low it can go. So, investment size is of course very, very different, uh, direct ownership huge cost is involved. Then we talk about uh, liquidity, liquidity we have seen that uh, in comparison with direct ownership, the uh, um, uh, the, uh, the liquidity is high because uh, it is just traded like a stock. So, e investment uh, in uh, REIT is uh, more liquid in comparison to direct ownership. Uh, direct ownership you will have to wait for the buyer to come, there are various forums, various um, um, like uh, online uh, portals, the print media through which you will or the local brokers through which you will have to attract buyers for your property and it is a time consuming process. It is not like that in REIT, REIT is a very fluid uh, market just like your stocks and bonds. And then you have management responsibility. So, investors are responsible for property management, maintenance and leasing of their property. So, if you are the sole owner of your property, direct owner of your property, then you are responsible for managing that. But REIT, uh, the management is there, they are responsible for the management of the REIT, uh, the different real estate owned by the REIT. So, you are uh, not responsible for managing them. Uh, then we have diversification. So, limited diversification as investment is usually focused on individual properties. If you are a small uh, investor, uh, then in that case you may have at max 1, 2, 3 properties to invest. So, uh, of course, the risk is increasing and the diversification is not also there. But in case of REIT, you can diversify uh, your uh, uh, like real estate, the REIT is owning different different real estate properties. Uh, for example, in India, we have office REITs, so they, they are holding different different office. So, and in different geographies of India, so they are uh, diversifying their uh, uh, portfolio. So that is there. That is uh, safeguard which is there in case of REIT. Then we have risk exposure. So. Uh, exposure uh, of course in direct ownership is high because all the risk is there uh, for you as an individual. So, uh, exposure to risk associated with individual properties, market fluctuation is very high in case of direct ownership. Um, REIT because of the diversification of the REIT portfolio, also you are indirectly uh, invested in that, uh, there is a management team. So, the risk exposure in that case is low in comparison to direct ownership. Then we talk about income distribution. So, rental income and potential capital gain are directly re received by investors in case of direct ownership. So, whatever you are earning, you are uh, earning directly. So, uh, the rental income generated by a property is going to you directly. So, that is there. Then income distribution in case of REIT is of uh, dividend. So, it is um, uh, like income is coming through dividend, it is coming through the uh, share appreciation, but it is again indirect. Uh, then we have entry and exit cost. Entry and exit cost is very high in uh, uh, direct ownership. You will have to shell out lot of money uh, and uh, cost. There will be lot of government uh, duty, stamp duty, uh, property tax which you will have to go through. So, uh, you will have to hire lawyers. So, that prop the, the entry and exit cost is not that small, but REIT you have uh, very small comparison to uh, direct ownership. And then access to professional management, in case of direct ownership you will have to pay for it, REIT it is there, management is present. Potential for leverage, in case of direct ownership, investor can leverage property through financing. That is an option available in direct ownership that you can leverage it by financing option, but that is can also be there, but it is managed at the portfolio level for REIT. It is not directly in the REIT, it can be managed at the portfolio level, but direct ownership you can avail 
the uh, the different uh, uh, leveraging options which are available in the financing and then tax treatment so tax benefits includes indirect ownership uh, for de uh, for depreciation mortgage interest and potential capital gain tax advantage reits are passed through entities distributing at least 90% of the uh, taxable income to shareholder qualifying for favorable tax treatment at the shareholder level so that is there at the shareholder level then we have other investment options so other investment options we have we have uh, options like crowdfunding we have uh, um, we have options like partnership we have funds we have syndications for investing in specific projects or assets within indian market we have real estate crowdfunding online platform for pooling funds so now uh, these methods are also coming up in the market now these mar uh, methods include crowdfunding now crowdfunding basically is that uh, multiple people are pooling uh, through some online channels their uh, uh, small investments uh, they are putting it in some uh, like in in a particular uh, project they are investing through uh, these uh, uh, portals where the peer type of uh, platforms are created where you can collect and then invest in a particular property but this is relatively new and uh, um, uh, reits is a much more safer uh, uh, and much more regulated uh, option of investing which is there then there are apart from this there are some other also like partnership where uh, uh, two or three or four different different big investors can come together and then they can invest in uh, certain uh, development projects real estate development projects so that option is also available to them and uh, apart from this there are certain other uh, projects uh, certain other methods like syndication where people can uh, group of investors can come together for investing in a specific project so different forms of such type of avenues are also available but generally when it comes to retail investors or small investors it is always preferable to either go for uh, reit or the other option is that they can go for direct ownership uh, where they have complete understanding of the real estate market of that particular area uh, risk with these options is that these ris uh, these options are uh, not that regulated these are newer and upcoming phase of investment in real estate and uh, uh, for such type of uh, investment the risk becomes very high so it is always prudent to go for uh, well regulated options like uh, direct ownership uh, or uh, reit channel for the retail investors then let's summarize what we have covered in this particular topic so we started with different real estate method we introduced that we have Uh, direct ownership we have reit we have some other newer methods which are emerging then we talked about uh, what is direct ownership what are its advantages we saw that direct ownership though lucrative has many uh, and has been many advantages like um, um, maximizing the return giving us full control but then we also discussed that there are certain risk associated with direct ownership and all those risks are directly affecting the owner of that building because you are the the sole person responsible for that particular um, asset and then we have also looked at reit we saw that what is reit that its structure is very similar to the mutual funds and that how we can uh, use this uh, indirect method of real estate investing for uh, diversification purposes of investment so that was uh, covered uh, in this particular part and then we uh, saw that Uh, how we can invest in reit in india what is the method which is available then like what are the regulatory framework which are there what are the advantages what are the different types of reit which are there so all that was discussed and then we also saw um, in the end that what are the different other new upcoming investment options but we also saw that there are a lot of risk associated with them uh, we also did a comprehensive comparison of reit and direct ownership uh, through different different factors so Thank you.